He stepped inside his home, he was overwhelmed with fear. An angel came with words from God, things were still unclear. Saying, read, read, but he could not read, amazing words that he heard. A trembling deep inside his heart, confused by what had occurred. There was only one who could comfort him to help him see, see the light. To ease his fears, to reassure, was Khadija his wife. He said, Zamiluni, Zamiluni, Dathiruni, Dathiruni. إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعين به ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Welcome back again with another episode in our program The Road to Medina. الحمد لله رب العالمين. We praise Allah and we thank Him a lot for being followers of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. الحمد لله. We got the privilege and the honor, and we are really, really in a great dignity and honor to be uh, among those who are the followers of Muhammad May peace and blessings be upon him وسلم, We continue talking about those great moments of his life وسلم, and his companion Abu Bakr Siddiq And as if you remember last time we have discussed together uh, when Rasulullah arrived to the cave of Thawr after Alhamdulillah Allah has saved him from the hands of the disbelievers who were planning to kill him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Now our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is saved and he is out of Mecca five miles away on the mountains uh, on that high mountain where the cave of Thawr is in those rocks and those stones Rasulullah with Abu Bakr al-Siddiq were able to arrive to that place of uh, Ghar Thawr or the cave of Thawr. And now Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he entered into the cave and he uh, radiallahu anhu he cleaned up the cave and made sure that he radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, closed all the holes and cleaned up the cave so nothing harm will happen uh, to the Prophet He closed the hole with uh, some of his soap. He cut some pieces and he closed the hole. And uh, two other holes he could not find uh, some of his dress to close. So he closed them with his foot. So what happens? Some of these great situations and look at the friendship a man who is a friend of Rasulullah Sallallahu Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has revealed Quran to praise this man as it is revealed in Surah Al-Layl. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is talking about this great man Abu Bakr Siddiq as the scholars of Islam, the commentary of Hadith who explain to us those verses about Abu Bakr and Siddiq, Allah the Almighty said, وَسَيُجَنَّبُهَا الْأَتْقَى الَّذِي يُؤْتِي مَا لَهُ يَتَزَكَّى وَمَا لِأَحَدٍ عِنْدَهُ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ تُجْزَى إِلَّا بِتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ رَبِّهِ الْأَعْلَى وَلَسَوْفَ يَرْضَى That Abu Bakr Siddiq رضي الله تعالى عنه, the pious man, the righteous man, the friend of Rasulullah Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, this great man, who was with Rasulullah all the time and a friend with him in the cave, a friend with him in the hardships of the time of Mecca before immigration, a friend with Rasulullah in the journey to Medina and in all the wars that he attended with Prophet Muhammad وسلم, all the ghazawat, all the battles he participated in all of them with our beloved Prophet وسلم, and look what he is doing now in the cave of Thawr with Rasulullah alayhi salatu wassalam Abu Bakr in Siddiq Rasulullah now inside the cave and he entered while Abu Bakr is waiting for him inside the cave Rasulullah وسلم, who did not sleep that night he put his head on the lab of Abu Bakr Siddiq 
رضي الله عنه wishing to sleep عليه الصلاة والسلام أبو بكر الصديق was trying to close some of the holes with his foot as it was narrated that while he was sitting and the Rasul Sallam is sleeping in his lab Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu he is covering the two holes with his foot and while he was doing so he couldn't move so that he doesn't bother disturb Rasul Sallam in his sleeping alayhi salatu wa salam so what happens while he was putting his foot radiyallahu ta'ala anhu something like a snake or or like something of the desert animals bited Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu in his foot and he did not move so that he doesn't disturb Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so what happens he was crying and crying with no any movement until the tears of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq fall on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abu Bakr, مَا لَكَ يَا أَبَى بَكْرٍ What is the matter? What's up Abu Bakr? What is the matter with you? Then Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he said, يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ لَقَدْ لُدِغْتْ Something bited me, يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ فِدَاكَ أَبِي وَأُمِّي May Allah protect you. فتفل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في موضع الألم فذهب ما يجده زين رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم he spat on the spot where أبو بكر الصديق was bited and then there was no any pain afterwards and this one of the miracles of our beloved Prophet Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام then what happens and how many nights they spend in this cave three nights they spend in the cave uh, until the night uh, uh, of the uh, day of uh, Sunday the night of Friday the night of Saturday and the night of Sunday Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an the son of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq Abdullah he used to go at night and stay with Rasulullah and his father Abu Bakr al-Siddiq in the cave. Aisha, the daughter of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anha, she said, وَهُوَ غُلَامٌ شَابٌ ثَقِفٌ لَقِنٌ She said, and this, uh, her brother Abdullah was a young man, like a boy in the early age, and he was so intelligent, and he was so smart person, and he was also able to get all the news from all the mushrikeen to come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَيَدْلِجُ عِنْدَهُمَا مِنْ بِسَحَرٍ فَيَدْلِجُ عِنْدَهُمَا بِسَحَرٍ it means that he will leave them late at night before dawn before the fajr and he will leave back to the Mecca فَيُصْبِحُ مَعْ قُرَيْشٍ بِمَكَّةَ كَبَائِتٍ so he will appear that he did not leave the city of Mecca during the uh, uh, the uh, the night and he will wake up with them in the morning normally nobody knows about his uh, his trip to the mountain of thawr where is the ghar or the cave of thawr is فلا يسمع امرا يكتادان به الا وعاه حتى ياتيهما بخبر ذلك حتى يختلط الظلام عائشه رضي الله عنها she said he would listen to all the plans and all what the disbelievers would say until he would come back to Rasulullah and his father in the night time to let them know about every single thing that they planned to do. That was Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr. So now we focus and know who was helping Rasulullah in that trip. After Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, now his son, Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr who used to take the news from the disbelievers and bring them to Rasulullah and his father in the night time and before this the morning he would leave so that nobody will feel that he was outside of the city and now we go to another person who was participating in this great event of Hijrah of Rasulullah 
His name is Amir ibn Fuhayra. He was a servant of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an. Amir ibn Fuhayra, he used to take he used to take the uh, goats and sheep and he would go to the uh, uh, place where Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr used to walk so that they he will cov cover the footprints of the uh, uh, Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr while he going back and forth to the cave. He would do that so that these flavors won't see the footprint of uh, Abu Bak uh, Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr to the cave. Uh, that's Amir ibn Fuhayra radiallahu anhuma. رضي الله عنه فيريحهما فيريحها عليهما حين تذهب ساعة من العشاء فيبيتان في رسل سو ستنا عائشة رضي الله عنها she has has narrated that to us about this great incident of of the هجرة of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم so عامر بن فحيرة would do that and he would give from the milk of these sheep to the Rasulullah and his friend Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an wa arda. And as for the Quraysh, the disbelievers, now they are in a big close. Now they don't know what to do. Where is Muhammad? And where is Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhuma? Anhu. So Quraysh, they now very crazy. They, sh they didn't know what did Muhammad do. And they didn't find him in all ways in the north to in Medina. They went behind him والسلام, and they couldn't find him. So now they were sure and it was confirmed to them that Muhammad والسلام, is out of Mecca and he is saved from their, uh, from their plots and their mockery. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him والسلام, So because it's three nights and they couldn't find him anywhere and they didn't find him in the way to Medina then it means that Muhammad وسلم, is saved and they cannot anymore find him alayhi salatu wassalam. Inshallah, after the break, I will continue with you these great incidents. Please stay with me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Does Islam say, cover the, you know, what is the purpose of our lives? When you go to the grave, the believer will be asked three questions. How many, you know, destruction of marriages, of society, of family ties have come because of statements made on someone's tongue by what someone has said, what Sharia really is. Think about it. But we want you to think about it. Think about life. Think about your purpose in life. Think about the creator of this earth we live in. Think about how you should worship this creator and who this creator is. That's our aim behind this show here on Huda TV. Let's focus on what Islam itself says as a legal Islamic religious system. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu assalamu ala ashraf al mursaleen. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen, amma ba'd. My dear brothers, Alhamdulillah, Allah saved his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now the disbelievers have completely give up to find Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because already passed the three nights and days and they couldn't find him alayhi salatu wassalam. So what happens after that? In all the ways to Medina, they couldn't find Rasulullah 
صلى الله عليه وسلم then the, the Quraysh the disbelievers they decided to have another meeting they will keep doing meeting and a meeting and after meeting to do to see what they, they should do uh, for Rasulullah who is now already out of Mecca Quraysh they after they started to think about this they want to put the procedures for the next steps that you should take so what they did they said that they will they will uh, watch all the roads and all the ways to Medina and they will make sure that they are uh, secured with their weapons with them with their swords so that when they see Muhammad وسلم, they will kill him and they offered a big prize for somebody who would come with the body of Rasulullah alive or dead they don't care they want to take him alayhi salatu salam so they would they bought a prize of a hundred camels imagine a hundred camels a gift for somebody who would bring Rasulullah sallam to them imagine subhanallah and a hundred camel that is the biggest prizes that the disbelievers will give to uh, at the time so they said that is somebody will bring Rasul sallam he had he will get he would get a, a hundred camels as a gift of getting Rasulullah sallam when they did that all the uh, uh, the strong people with their horses they started to go everywhere around Mecca and in all ways to Medina trying to find Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam thinking that they will they will be able to uh, uh, to catch him alayhi salatu wasallam but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved his prophet alayhi salatu wasallam so the ones who were looking for Rasulullah sallam they arrived even to the gate of the of the cave where Rasulullah sallam was inside with Abu Bakr as-Siddiq imagine they were looking in the mountains and everywhere around the Mecca until they were just one one meter close to the gate of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, uh, is protecting his Prophet sallam and nobody would reach to him alayhi salatu wasalam or cause him any problem Rasulullah sallam is near to them and Abu Bakr Siddiq is so worried about those disbelievers who arrived to the cave and Abu Bakr Siddiq he said that uh, I raised up my head and I heard the steps of the disbelievers above the cave and I said Ya Rasulullah Ya Nabi Allah O Prophet of Allah لو أن بعضهم تأطأ بصره لرآنا if somebody just put his head down he would see us then Rasulullah sallam said Uskut Ya Aba Bakr Ithnani Allahu Thalithuhuma Aba Bakr stop don't talk like this what about two people Allah is the third of them and in another narration Ma zannuka bithnain ya Aba Bakr Allahu Thalithuhuma what do you think about two people Abu Bakr Allah is the third of them subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning that Allah is uh, is protecting and showering them with his protection and his mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why nobody will be able to reach to them to Rasulullah and Abu Bakr Siddiq and it was a miracle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, saved his Prophet وسلم, and his friend Abu Bakr Siddiq from those disbelievers who were eager to catch him وسلم, to get the prize of the hundred camels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed an ayah in the Holy Quran to be recited until our time and until the day of Qiyamah. In Surah Al Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Illa tansuruhu faqad nasarahu Allah, is akharajahu ladina kafaru thani athnaini, is huma fil ghari, is yakulu li sahibi hila tahazan in Allah ma'ana, fa'anzal Allah sakina tahu alayhi, wa ayyadahu bijunudi lam tarauha, wa jala kalimata ladina kafaru sufla, wa kalimatu Allah hiya al ulia. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Quran to be recited. Allah revealed if you do not support him or give him victory, Allah will help and support him and give him victory. Uh, when uh, his people and his tribes kicked him out or forced him to leave his beloved city, uh, with his second friend, with his friend Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, 
only two people together, Rasulullah and Abu Bakr Siddiq. When his friend said to him, they might be able to see or catch us. And Rasulullah would say to him, do not worry, do not get sad or upset. Allah is with us and Allah will help and support us and he will protect us subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be the one that is above the word of the disbelievers. The victory of Allah will be with the ones who are with Allah. Our Prophet وسلم, and his friend Abu Bakr in al-Siddiq radiallahu an. My dear brothers and sisters, now the disbelievers give up. They couldn't find Rasulullah anywhere. They sent all the people and they gave them the uh, a prize. They promised them with a big prize of a hundred camels for anyone who will bring Rasulullah alive or dead. Imagine with all that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has saved his beloved Prophet sallallahu They plot and they work hard to catch him even though they know that he left Mecca. But they're still looking for him because they know that if he وسلم, would go outside in any city, he will be gathered with so many people who love him and obey him and embrace Islam with him. And he will have a strong nation who would fight to take the right of the believers. My dear brothers, those disbelievers in you, the fact of La ilaha illallah, the fact of this religion that takes people from the worship of the idols and statues and worshiping of Allah and Al Uzza to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why they want to ban people to do it. They want to ban Rasulullah to continue his message. They want to kill him anywhere they will find him. They want to get him alive or dead. And they put all the means in order to reach to their goal. And shaitan was helping and supporting them and making them eager and eager to do that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made their makr, made their mockery weak. And Allah saved his prophet Muhammad sallallahu And the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that is high and higher than any word else. If Allah said that he will protect his prophet, then nobody else can harm his prophet. Allah said to his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah said to his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and Allah will protect you from the people who are trying to to do wrong to you. And Allah said to his Prophet وسلم, and Allah will protect you from those who are loving at you or doing mockery against you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved his beloved Prophet وسلم. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we learn from this great story the good friendship from Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an, who have spent from his wealth, from his money, to uh, plan for the hijrah of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. His son, Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr, who used to come at night and stay with Rasulullah sallam to give them the news. And he goes back in the morning so that nobody will feel that he stayed overnight away from Mecca. And he will sit down with the people and the people do not pay attention to him in his young age. And he would take the news and all the plans that the disbelievers do to in order to reach to Rasul وسلم, and he will bring them to Rasul وسلم, and his father in the evening. We will look into the servant of Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hadrat Amir ibn Fuhaira, the companion who was a Muslim also at the time and who used to take his goats and he gave them milk to Rasul وسلم, and he used to remove the footprints of Abdullah ibn Abi Bakr who used to go to the Messenger of Allah and his father in the night time. My dear brothers, this family of Abu Bakr Siddiq played a big role in order for the da'wah of Islam to continue in the time of Hijrah of Rasulullah. Look at Abu Bakr Siddiq, the friend of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. Look at that man who was suffering and he got pited and he used to he, he went into the cave before Rasulullah in order to make sure it is cleaned. See how much he loves his Prophet Wasallam. See how much this great man Abu Bakr Siddiq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran on him when he said, when Allah said, لا تحزن إن الله معنا Wasallam said to him, don't get sad or upset. Allah is beside us. It is important always to seek to the ma'iyya of Allah. 
to seek that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be beside you, to be next to you subhanahu wa ta'ala always. We always in need of the help of Allah. You cannot do anything or reach a goal or do or fulfill something that you love except to when you are close to Allah Azza wa Jal. La tahzan inna Allah ma'ana. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with those who fear him, with those who believe in him, with those who are close to him, with those who would love to be always on the right track in the right path, the path of Muhammad sallallahu We learn so many things from this great story, the story of the uh, hijrah of Rasulullah and his life in the cave for three nights with his friend Abu Bakr Siddiq, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. We are going now to walk with Rasulullah step by step to Medina and we'll see what happens in the way to Medina with our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Until then and until I see you next time inshaAllah, I leave you in the protection of Allah. May Allah protect us, may Allah save us, may Allah gather us together with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi in Jannah. Ameen. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atub ilayk. Fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He stepped inside his home, he was overwhelmed with fear. An angel came with words from God, things were still unclear. Saying read, read, but he could not read, amazing words that he heard. A trembling deep inside his heart, confused by what had occurred. There was only one who could comfort him to help him see, see the light. To ease his fears, to reassure, was Khadija his wife. He said, Zamiluni, Zamiluni, Dathiruni, Dathiruni.